Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Juana Busiuk. I'm an English teacher at the Tudor Argesi Theoretical High School in Craiova, a proud partner of the project Combining Approaches in, in Language and Literature Learning, COL. Uh, and today I'm attending the webinar called Teaching in Emergency Situations. Um, it's not a nice thing to remember uh, the emergency period, but I think it's good for us to do so. Okay, uh, so the plan for today's presentation is some general considerations regarding online school, challenges of the online period, uh, some advantages and disadvantages of online schooling, online safety, which is a very important aspect, and some conclusions. Teaching in emergency situations. The COVID-19 pandemics has significantly changed the human society, if only on a temporary basis, by reducing interactions to a strictly necessary level. I think we all remember how we got out at certain times and some bad things. So social life and most human activities were transferred to the online environment. And in many segments of life, the virtual things became real. As much as it was blamed for its negative effects, the virtual environment is now encouraged and a lot of money, effort, and even affection is now invested in this kind of life. See, that's us. Okay. Uh, in the context of the pandemics, online lessons started in a quite insecure way with many questions and problems to solve. I think we all have these questions. How can I create a virtual classroom? How can my students create their accounts? Which software is more user-friendly? How will teachers convey information to students? which educational platform to choose, classroom, Zoom, whatever. What if not everyone has a phone or a computer or a tablet or even internet access? What if teachers or students don't know how to use them? And what is correct netiquette? What should I do when I'm online? For an entire school year, we had the opportunity to experience what they called a hybrid system with both uh, physical and online teaching. And uh, while most, uh, while both uh, systems had their advantages and disadvantages, uh, sometimes the online version was the best to achieve uh, some high quality training. Uh, let's remember some advantages. Um, advantages of online school, like students learn at their own pace. Uh, materials can be accessed at any time because they are available to them on their accounts. Assessment is relatively fast. Classes can be more attractive if modern technologies are used. We all learned how to use technology more in that time, if there can be any positive sides. Or communication if it's facilitated by the creation of groups. Now go back to the disadvantages of online school because there were many. Uh, instant feedback is difficult to ensure. Further explanations are not easy to provide. Uh, the educational needs of students cannot be well catered for. Uh, students can feel tempted to cheat. <laughs> it is not always clear how students take notes or if they do. And there have been cases. Uh, and often technical problems arise both on our sides and on theirs. Sometimes on their part, it's more intentional. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, now I talked about uh, the 
part of staying safe online. It was part of the government's efforts to implement online school and uh, class teachers were supposed to hold lessons about this topic. Uh, and I'm going to show you a presentation of how a colleague of mine approached this subject with uh, some lower secondary school students. Uh, it approached some quite common sense matters, uh, but uh, many of the students admitted they were making mistakes. So online safety. The internet is amazing when used safely and correctly. Here are some simple rules that will help you stay safe online. Be smart and safe by making the right choices. Nice teacher, huh? Loading. If you see something online that upsets you, stop. Stop what you're doing. Do not click on the page or reply to any messages. Close. Close the laptop. Put your phone or tablet down. Tell. Tell a trusted adult. Online gaming. Mm -hmm. We did play a lot, even us as adults. Always ask a trusted adult before you play games online. Use a username instead of your real name when playing games online. It is important to be nice to people so that you don't upset them. Remember to treat others how you would like to be treated. Making friends. Only talk to people you know online. If someone you don't know sends you a request or message, ask a trusted adult. Never agree to meet someone in person that you met online. Some people on the internet might not be who they say they are. Online bullying. Online bullying is a type of bullying. It can take place when playing games or talking to people online. If someone says something that upsets you, tell a trusted adult, such as a teacher or parent, and block the bully. Show whatever you receive to a trusted adult so they can help you. Don't keep online bullying to yourself. Tell a trusted adult. People want to help you and make it better. It's a real problem. Never share any of your personal information online, such as your name, school, or address. Instead of using a photo, Use an avatar to represent your face. Before you share a photograph of you or your friends online, check with the trusted adult. If you get sent a photograph that upsets you, tell a trusted adult. They made fun of the frequencies of trusted adult. Uh, so this is a summary of what advices were given so far. And they were even suggested a story. Uh, so the attack of the evil email. Bob decides to check his email. He is looking for emails from his friends and family. He spots an email offering him free pizza for a year. Whoa, too good to be true. He opens it and clicks on the link. The link downloads a virus to the final computer the computer stops working properly. Uh, Bob feels very guilty and very worried. What will his family think? Bob decides to tell his parents straight away. Mm -hmm, that sounds serious. Well, next time Bob moves email, uh, spam emails to the junk folder and he can defeat the email, the evil email. Now it's all clear, stay safe and enjoy your online experience. So that was my colleague's presentation. Well, the jury is still out there regarding the amount of online activities it is safe to get involved in from the point of view of our mental welfare. We are 
social beings after all. I personally prefer face-to-face uh, supported by technology, the best of both worlds. So thanks for watching and may school be as you like it. Um, hello everyone. Um, my name is uh, Božica filipovic -Vek. I'm a teacher of Croatian language and literature in primary and secondary school. And uh, I'm going to tell you something about teaching in emergency situations. Um, basically, the use of the digital tools. So I'll uh, share with you some of my examples of uh, good practice in school. Um, just a second. I hope you see that uh, uh, the presentation I'm sharing. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell you something about communication with students. Um, I started with digital tools at school long before the COVID appeared. Uh, I was interested by the experience of some other colleagues and uh, encouraged by the publishing house I work with in primary school. COVID-19 only accelerated the introduction of new digital tools and their application in distance learning. I was lucky enough that my school where I worked uh, then, and I still work part-time, was in an experimental program and was equipped with everything necessary for distance learning. Uh, all students were given tablets to use at home, as well as a certain number of gigabytes for stu studying and uh, doing their homework. And also all teachers had a laptop provided by Carnet. Um, the only thing uh, teachers had to pay for was their own internet. And uh, that's the main problem uh, with it, that uh, the home internet was very, very slow. Um, the transition to online classes was announced, so the principals could do some preparatory work. A platform was agreed upon to officially communicate with students and uh, leave le learning materials, exchange solved and corrected tasks. That is a channel for any feedback between students and teachers. All teachers and students were given brief instructions on uh, how to use the platform. Initially, it was Yammer, but later Microsoft Teams proved to be much more practical, faster and easier to use, uh, with many more options for publishing materials. Even today, students follow the publication of material on Teams. Uh, there they can get a digital format uh, PDF of reading material that we don't have enough in the library, and uh, there are also uh, mind maps and slips for repeating and practicing the material, uh, video lessons and similar. Uh, some of the digital tools I used in online teaching uh, were uh, Lino IT Board or Padlet, um, Kahoot, WordWall, Glockster, uh, made for posters, but uh, unfortunately it is no longer available. Uh, stop motion, image flip, uh, ThinkLink, PowerPoint, Filmora, Pixton or Storyboard That, uh, Clipchamp, Canva, Microsoft Forms, of course, for evaluation, surveys, and many other digital tools. <clears throat> I would like to um, introduce you uh, with our work in school. Uh, I will tell a little about every digital uh, tool I worked with and uh, uh, how uh, students commented on that. Uh, the Lino IT board or Padlet, uh, we used it after reading a literary text and it's the fastest way to publish students' experience of the text, uh, write comments on someone's work and similar. Uh, photos, pictures, videos, or documents can also be attached. Uh, this is an example of good practice. 
Uh, in an additional lesson, students added rare and unusual words they found and uh, wrote their explanations with photos to the Lino board or Padlet in order to expand their vocabulary. Each week, one or more words were chosen by, by mutual agreement, and uh, the board was expanded with uh, new words during the additional lesson. Uh, the board was available on the school's website and available to everyone interested uh, throughout the school year. Uh, here you have a link to the website, uh, which you can uh, uh, see. And I will show you on the next slide. And uh, the students' comments were, uh, Maria said, and I quote, it's transparent and allows multiple users to post and edit the board at the same time. Photos and text are simply added to post-it notes that we choose from four colors. Uh, here is a print screen on how it looks like. Uh, and you see how um, transparent it is. Uh, it was very um, amusing for them to uh, post some of the words. Uh, the next digital tool is uh, Kahoot. I'm sure you know uh, very well uh, this digital tool. Uh, it's made for quizzes. Uh, after each interpretation of a literary text, you can check the understanding of the text or the reading work. Students love it because it involves the use of mobile phones in class, uh, through which they choose the answer by color and compete with each other in accuracy and speed. Uh, these are student comments. Christian said, and I quote, Kahoot is, very, uh, Kahoot is great for checking knowledge at the end of class. You can see all the right and wrong answers. That is great because you can correct mistakes and be better next time. Also, your friends can play with or against you. Uh, Leon said, for me, the digital tool Kahoot is the best choice if a teacher wants to make a quiz because it is very simple and all students love it. It enables students to participate individually in the teaching content and have fun at the same time. We used Kahoot in the Croatian language for quizzes about the books we read, and we had a lot of fun. <clears throat> uh, WordWall. Uh, WordWall is a tool that enables repetition and organization of literature and language materials. Uh, students can find pre-existing quizzes on a specific topic uh, and take them, but uh, they can also create their own, own questions for repeating what has been learned before. It's very easy and transparent, and uh, anyone can find their way around it quickly. Uh, there are several templates between which the appearance of the content or quiz can be changed. Uh, the maze, for example, is very interesting for the students because they have to find the correct answer and uh, get to it by running away from the monster. Or the template where they uh, steer the plane towards the cloud that contains the correct answer to the question. Uh, Christian said about word wall, it provides all kinds of knowledge checking. I love it because uh, there are lots of different games and quizzes. My favorite part is that I can create my own quizzes and share them with my friends and classmates. Uh, here you have a, a, a for, photograph of um, a word wall about uh, Croatian writer Stepan Tomas, uh, who is from uh, Nova Bukovica, where I work now. Uh, Glockster is an excellent tool for creating creative posters uh, in which you can also add photos, links, video, or audio recordings, and similar. Uh, it is a service that lets you make digital posters for free. You can add text, graphics, sound, video, and images to your Glockster. It's a great tool for students to present their work. It offers tons of colorful and uh, fun borders. Uh, frames and wall designs, letting you create appealing posters in a matter of minutes. Unfortunately, 
uh, we used it for a small period of time uh, and we really enjoyed it. But after a certain trial period, uh, the tool was no longer free to use. Uh, the works created by the students are unfortunately no longer available. So um, uh, this site is uh, no longer functional. But when we used it, it was everything was OK. So uh, Leo said, Globster is a really fun tool. You can choose any background you can find. Uh, or you can insert your own photos from your phone. In this tool, you can do your homework in many different ways. Uh, you can get creative and still learn so much. Uh, stop motion, <clears throat> frame by frame or stop motion is an animation technique used to make a certain object look uh, like it's moving on its own. Uh, between each captured frame, the object moves slightly, which creates the illu illusion of movement uh, when the series of frames it is displayed as a single unit. Uh, to make a simple film in the stop animation technique, it is enough to have a mobile phone with, with a camera, a stop animation application, which is available for free, uh, a good story, some time, and patience. Uh, films created uh, using the stop animation technique can be cartoon, uh, collage, or puppet, and uh, various objects from everyday life can be used. So you need to draw something or take an object or several of them, photograph them, draw something, or move the object a little, then photograph uh, that change or movement, and repeat this until you have enough photos uh, that will be connected in a video to create the illusion that the object is moving. Um, I will show you the video uh, which my students uh, made. Uh, and uh, then I will uh, read the comment from my student. Dinosaur. Uh, Maria said about this uh, uh, tool that, uh, uh, and I quote, we did the project assignment in groups or pairs. We had to choose a theme, some figurines, and turn on our imagination to create a movie. A series of photographs was needed to bring the objects to life. It was very, very uh, fun to work in that tool because we realized that it is not easy to create a movie. It takes a lot of patience and uh, small steps in order for it to turn out as we wanted and imagined. Uh, we also looked at the other uh, works and it was very interesting because we saw how we all chose different topics and each video turned out to be interesting. 
the next tool is Image Flip. Uh, this tool is convenient and fun for students to create uh, memes for homework on a given topic, such as, for example, school, uh, learning, friendship, uh, and so on. Um, it contains uh, ready-made templates into which uh, text can be inserted as desired. Uh, here you have a first photo that says um, at the time when you expect a C from math and eventually get an A. And uh, the second one says uh, when you remember that uh, you have an exam tomorrow and you didn't study. Uh, Mikhail said about this tool that it was very easy homework and I had lots of fun doing it. It was even better when we saw each other's ideas. Uh, it was like listening to jokes in a way. So they enjoyed it. Uh, the next tool I worked with was, was uh, ThingLink. Uh, ThingLink is a digital tool that allows users to add multimedia and interactive content to images or video content. Uh, after processing a certain lesson topic, it allows students to independently research and choose the multimedia uh, content they want to display. Uh, we used it uh, uh, around uh, the day of uh, remembering the Vukovar uh, in, um, uh, in that uh, uh, month. Uh, so they uh, made an interactive uh, photo uh, where every of the links can be opened. Uh, and here you have uh, photos, uh, um, you have um, uh, video content and you have uh, pictures of uh, Ovchara and uh, uh, some of the Vukovar's uh, uh, main uh, things. Uh, Nicola said about this uh, uh, tool, uh, and I quote, in my opinion, this tool is very good because of different options it provides such as uh, inserting images, videos, links, and so on. Uh, PowerPoint, I don't need a special introduction and uh, presentation of it. Uh, you know uh, how it looks like and uh, you use it, I'm sure you use it all the time. Uh, my students love it. Uh, uh, here I have a screenshot of PowerPoint about uh, an addiction of uh, plastic surgeries. Uh, they um, researched uh, the team uh, after reading the uh, literary text about it. Uh, so Josipa says, I like to use digital tools in class because they allow me to work more easily. Uh, and Hannah says, I like to use PowerPoint to make presentations because it's very quick and easy to work with. Uh, there are lots of options and the program itself helps us in creating presentations uh, with options such as idea for design, which makes the presentation and thus uh, the teaching itself uh, more interesting and dynamic. Uh, Filmora is the next digital tool. Uh, we use it mostly for video baits. Uh, students often use this digital tool for projects uh, after they have covered a specific topic in literature. So they have the task of recording a film of a specific topic or genre, or in this case, recording a video bait for a given book. With it, uh, we also par participated uh, in the competition announced by Carnet, and the students also wrote uh, their script uh, independently. Um, Maria says, I think it's very important to use digital tools in creation language classes. Uh, with their help, our classes are more fun and relaxed, and we enjoy working, having fun, and also becoming uh, more eloquent. With Filmora, we learned something new about the world of technology. For example, how to add background sounds to a recording, edit the play, uh, edit uh, the background, add subtitles or music of your choice. Hannah says, students can be very creative by creating videos and Filmora makes it possible. 
there are many options in Filmora that allow students to create quality videos quickly and easily. And uh, Leon at the end said, uh, Filmora is a great video tool. It allows a lot of different effects and different video editing. We used it to create uh, video baits for books and for monthly uh, projects. It's very fun and easy to work with. Um, I will show you a video bait that my uh, students made uh, for the competition uh, uh, of Carnet. Uh, they uh, read uh, uh, the book uh, by Dinko Shimonovich uh, Duga. So here it is. Okay. Um, the next uh, digital tool is a uh, Pixton or Storyboard Dad. Uh, they are both uh, made for uh, comics. Um, here you have uh, one comic that uh, my students made. Um, you have uh, uh, pre-prepared templates and you insert text in it. Um, Daniela said about this tool that Pixton is a quick comic book maker that can save us lots of time. Uh, it provides many options for creating interesting comics and lots of different characters and situations with which can uh, enrich the story. And uh, Hannah says, uh, Pixton saves us uh, lots of time uh, that we would spend creating comics uh, on paper. Um, the next tool is uh, Clipchamp. Uh, Clipchamp uh, was a new tool for me. Uh, students discovered it and uh, they made uh, an ad in it uh, for, um, uh, for the fictional product, the product I uh, uh, gave them the assignment. Uh, so it enables the recording of commercials, videos, uh, audio dictionaries and similar. They also made some audio dictionaries uh, using it. Uh, students can show all their cre creativity and ideas. Uh, and the recorded materials uh, cannot be downloaded, but uh, they can be viewed using the link. Uh, Dominic said about this tool, it's a very easy tool to use, and it allowed us to display everything we envisioned for our fictional product ad. Uh, here we have a link, and uh, I will show you uh, how they made uh, an ad for a fictional product uh, called Sarmalino. Enjoy. Slatko slane kombinacije, volite li sarmu? Čokolino vam je predosadan. Imamo rješenje za vas. Sarmalino. Sarmalino je domaće organski napravljeno jelo, zdravo i ljekovito za sve uzraste. 
Napravljeno je od vrhunskog mesa i najboljeg čokolina koje su birali naši najsposobniji i najobrazovaniji radnici. Za narodbu Sarmalina nazovite broj 09977086642. Proizvod je besplatan, samo morate platiti poštarinu 400 eura. Jedi Sarmalino jer je zdravo i fino! Ok, that was it. Um, I know you probably don't understand everything they say, but uh, it was uh, very cute, actually. And uh, they had lots of fun making it, which is my um, my goal. Um, Canva is also a tool I don't uh, need uh, to specially um, introduce you with. Uh, so I'm going all. Um, I'm going only. Uh, I'm going to only read the uh, comments uh, that students gave. Uh, Maria said, "In my opinion, Canva is the most uh, fun and useful tool. In the creation language class, we made various posters, greeting cards, postcards, posters, and infographics on given to topics. Uh, it was always interesting for me to work in Canva." because I could edit the poster exactly as I imagined it. I could add uh, various shapes, change the color, text font, position, and so on. And uh, Leon said, Canva is great for creating different posters, invitations, even presentations. It is very easy to use and contains many editing options. We used it for posters to mark important dates, for posters with uh, wise thoughts, the topic of learning how to learn and similar. Uh, here you have a poster for, uh, with tips for easier learning. Um, Microsoft Forms uh, is a tool uh, we used uh, when we wanted to uh, evaluate something in class. Uh, with Microsoft Forms, you can create uh, questionnaires, tests, and surveys. Uh, invite others to respond uh, via almost uh, any web browser or mobile device. Uh, see real-time results as they are submitted. Use analytics to evaluate responses and export results to Excel for additional analysis or evalu evaluations. Uh, Hannah said about uh, forms. Uh, with forms, teachers can easily create surveys and collect data from students. It is easy to use, which made it an attractive tool for writing tests uh, during online classes. Uh, that is uh, all from me for now. I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you. Bye. Hello, everyone. My name is Helena Rostas. I'm a teacher of Croatian language and literature at the School of Industry and Crafts Latina in Croatia. And the topic of my presentation will be teaching with the, with the Virtual Museum. During the presentation, I will try to give answers to some questions like what are virtual museums? What are the advantages of them? Um, how we can include virtual museums in language and literature teaching. I will give some examples of lesson activities with, with virtual museums. And at the end, I will talk about resources I use uh, the, uh, while preparing this presentation. Virtual Museum is a collection of digitally recorded images, sound files, text documents, and other data of historical, scientific, or cultural interest that are accessed through electronic media. Most virtual museums are sponsored by institutional museums and are directly depend upon their existing collections. There are several advantages of a virtual museum. 
uh, when we talk about a bigger museum, the, um, there is no limited amount of information that can be given to the user. And for bigger museum, uh, that's especially important because some museums may never be able to display part of the exhibition publicly or may only be able to do so once every few years. Uh, the visual museum uh, are always available to the user 24 seven. The viewing time of the exhibits is not limit limited. And sometimes due to the, for example, geographical distance, the virtual museum is the only possibility for the user to see part of the exhibition of a certain museum. Um, the goal of visiting a virtual museum, uh, when we talk about smaller museums and museums with uh, local importance, uh, can be users' motivation for physical visit to the museum because uh, smaller museums um, need to motivate visitors uh, to visit them. Uh, the contents provided by uh, virtual museums we can include in almost every part of the lesson of literature, written and oral communication. Also, teaching with virtual museums opens uh, several possibilities for the integration of teaching cons content contents in the in the frame of teaching of mother tongue literature, language, and oral and written communication. And also it um, provides correlation of uh, the teaching contents of the mother tongue and other teaching subjects like uh, uh, history, like uh, geographic, geography, but also um, biology, chemistry, and uh, similar subjects. Um, Virtual museums as a teaching tool can be excellently including in the teaching process, both in the classroom and during distance learning. Um, I will continue this presentation with examples of teaching activities using the content of virtual museums. Uh, next two slides will um, talk about possibilities of museums or some items in museums in the face of uh, when students studying uh, the biographies of different writers. For example, a virtual collection of the famous Parisian Louvre Museum provides artistic portraits or self-portraits of famous French writers like Victor Hugo, you can see here. Uh, and on this link is a self-portrait of Charles Baudelaire. Mm -hmm. And um, similar exam as examples can be found on the website of the Prado Museum uh, in Madrid. Their virtual collection includes portraits of famous ancient and Spanish writers. You'll see on this link examples of portraits of Luis de Gongora, Miguel de Cervantes, and at the end, Aesop. Uh, some museums offer virtual tours of their exhibits. Um, I'll prepare three examples, the Sistine Chapel in Vatican, the Frida Kahlo Museum in Mexico City, and uh, the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam. Uh, I, will, I would suggest that you include a ritual tour through the Sistine Chapel, for example, in the introduction the part of teaching content related to Renaissance art and literature. And now I will open a link to virtual tour to Museum Frida Kahlo in Mexico City. And it can be integrated into the teaching content of biography as a literal genre. And students could um, could introduce biography through the story about life and works of one of the most prominent and influential uh, female artists in history. In Croatia, for example, a virtual tour through this museum, uh, we can include in the interpretation of the novel 
Frida's Bed, uh, written by the famous Croatian author Slavinka Draculic. It's a biographical novel. Um, on the websites of Sun Museum, in addition to virtual collections and tours, uh, we can find res resources for teachers that we can implement in our teaching or we can use them as inspiration for developing our own activities. One of interesting ideas, uh, according to my opinion, is idea developed by Christine Kassler for the Virtual Museum of Canada, uh, my personal museum. During that activity, uh, it has two steps. First step is uh, when students become virtual curators and they prepare virtual exhibition and you as a teacher can connect that exercise with um, introducing digital tools for making virtual galleries like art steps and images, for example. Uh, the other step, second step in that um, exercise can be uh, that students um, as an oral or written um, written essay or as an oral presentation should reconstruct the life of the person who makes some uh, virtual collection uh, that they found in some box for example. Um, then the other um, interesting uh, website is the website of the Art Institute of Chicago um, with very high quality teaching materials. I choose for this presentation three examples. First uh, is written an oral communication exercise relating to storytelling figure. Now I will open the link. So you'll see on this page classroom activities. So there are several developed classroom activities and the base for that activities is storytelling figure, uh, which is um, um, exhibit in the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, for example, it takes to become journalist, a piece of history, see your story storyteller, etc. Um, I think it's important to emphasize here that this exercise with storytelling figure um, enable uh, several connections of language teaching with other su subjects teaching subjects like history or geography. Uh, the second interesting uh, example or exercise from the site of the Art In Institute of Chicago is character map, um, in which students uh, create a character map of the person who is in the work of art he or she chose from the museum collection. The third exercise is similar to the character map, the conversation between characters. Uh, also, students choose a work of art from the collection and then form a dialogue between two characters. Um, and it could be also like a storytelling figure, a start starting point to connect the content of several teaching subjects. Of course, all these um, examples, all these exercises, you can adapt to your teaching method and the condition in which the teaching process takes place. When we talk about creation resources, very interesting example, I think, is a Museum of Broken Relationships, which has a very interesting website in English and Croatian. Uh, Museum of Broken Relationships is fo was founded in Zagreb around 10 years ago and it was awarded as the most innovative museum in Europe in 2011. The museum is dedicated to failed love relationships and the exhibits are items left by former lovers uh, with a brief description of why a specific item was so important for that broken relationship. Um, my, my, my suggestion for the 
activity with students is that students, after viewing the virtual collection, um, write an essay or prepare an oral presentation about an object that symbolizes a relationship, their relationship with a close person or person who was close to him or her. Um, the second creation example is literary heritage in a museum. Museums. It's a thematic guide through creation museums and galleries that poses legacies or individual items related to the life and work of writers who were born or who created in Croatia. Uh, one of the writers about whom we can find sources on that website is maybe uh, maybe well known to you, Anton Gustav Matos, if you participated in Mobility in Croatia in October, or if you saw our photos, uh, you saw that on the third day of our mobility, we visited Zagreb and visited Matos' statue in Zagreb's upper town. Uh, first activity is Anton Gustav Matos in modern music. Uh, here is that site. That page, just a second. Um, some of Matter's lyrical poems are set to music by contemporary creation musicians. Here you can see links from the YouTube. And uh, my suggestion for the activity is that student Students listen to that songs and argue in written or oral form to what extent the set version of the poem was successful. The other activity about Matos' life and work is Anton Gustav Matos' travels. Matos was well known as a traveler and he spent several years um, abroad, outside Croatia. He lived in Belgrade, he lived in uh, Switzerland, in Paris. And uh, on that this page, you can see the digital map about Matos' travels. So students can research the map, research the writer's biography, and connect biographical facts with his... Um, his um, works about travels. Um, after that, in, as on the final, in the final stage, they can write a travel essay about the imaginary trip to one of the cities where Matos stayed or lived. Uh, on the same site, the interesting resources about first creation political journalist and one of the uh, Pioneers of Feminism in Croatia, writer Maria Juric Zagorka. Um, literary Heritage in Museums platform offers digital copies of the pages of the magazine Ženske List, which was published in the 30s of the 20th century, and it was um, edited by Maria Juric Zagorka. Uh, that was the first Croatian uh, magazine uh, it, it intended for female readers. After reading some pages of that magazine, students can enga engage in a comparative analysis comparing Ženski list from the 30, 30s uh, of the 20th century with contemporary magazine magazines intended for female readers. Uh, I would also say that this topic can be a good starting point for the debate activity. Um, here on this uh, slide, final slide, you can find resources I used during, um, uh, while I prepared this presentation. Uh, I sincerely thank you for your attention and I, I'm open for you all your questions. Uh, also, I would add that perhaps the starting point for further discussion can, could be the question of what are the disadvantages of, vir of virtual museums 
or at least what are the advantages of classic museums compared to the virtual ones. Thank you very much. Hello to everyone. My name is Lubinka Artoska. I'm teacher of Macedonian language in uh, Dmitrija Chupovsky from North Macedonia, from Veles. Uh, uh, I have presentation. I have prepared presentation for uh, teaching in emergency situation. Uh, and I want to share with you uh, what my opinion about every uh, every thing in uh, every uh, uh, <laughs> I want to share with you my opinion about the emergency situation and teaching and learning in schools. My opinion about situation before uh, COVID pandemic, before 2020. Uh, in our educational system, in our country before 2020, there were no tools or trained staff for distance teaching. It was rare to, to uh, have some of teacher uh, who is have experience to do something like that. The teacher supplied the classical teaching with the application of ICT methods in the daily education process. During the emergency situation with the COVID pandemic, there was a need for online teaching. Uh, in the first time, it was very difficult for all of us because we don't have face-to-face uh, -face the students and we have some problems how to contact with them. The most used tools were Google tools, uh, Google Classroom, forums, Meet, etc. Some of teachers uh, were, were using Zoom uh, application. Zoom was also used in, uh, to hold lecture, lectures or debates. But since all teachers had no experience with those techniques and methods, uh, there were problems in the beginning. It was so difficult to um, make a uh, meeting with, with, uh, with students because a lot of them there were no uh, no computers uh, no uh, tablets or mobile mobile uh, phones to contact and to uh, use this application after uh, next year the next year um, our uh, minist my ministry uh, realized real shortcomings in order to to uh, smoothly follow the teaching the Microsoft Teams platform was, was used for all schools. With with this platform, work in the teaching process has become easier. After the trainings, each uh, each uh, teacher could organize his teaching according to the subject he teaches. It, uh, this is for uh, theore theoretical subjects, but uh, the practical subject were, were, uh, must, must be in face-to-face uh, -face with the teachers. Learning is a process in which students acquire knowledge about any subject. For literature and language as a subject teacher, I can say that communication is very important. That communication is best face-to-face, -face, but learning and teaching must go and in an emergency situations. 
In the study of literature and language, the both tools are provided by distance learning platforms. Those tools can, use, can also be used in the regular teaching process. Uh, in my uh, classes, uh, I used uh, everything what can I found on uh, websites. And with the help of several foundation websites, uh, books can be used in electronic form, which facilitates the avail availability in individual books. Uh, changing cha uh, changes is a process, and we, like teacher, we should be uh, uh, challenged uh, to to uh, make it. When can we uh, may uh, the global problem with the pandemic, especially all teachers, has taught us that we learn all our lives. Teaching must continue at all times as well as in an emergency situation. Learning for students is a process uh, that is uh, unstoppable. Uh, that process, thanks to various uh, trainings and projects, teachers are also in a position to accept the challenges and of applying new methods and techniques. Through the activities of this project and the exchanges experienced, the students and teachers who were part of exchanges gained experience in applying new tools and techniques. Through dissemination uh, to their teachers and students from our school today and in the future, they will use techniques that, that they, can, they were introduced for the first time. Those are Kahoot, Story Jumper, Quiz. In the daily practice, in the educational process today, teachers successfully use all of the listed tools in their work. They are built with the terms of learning, of checking what has been learned. They can be a great help in emergency situation whenever there is a need. Thank you for watching. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, learning methods. Okay, learning methods cover all of the techniques that can change depending on the individual characteristics of the people and increase the success rate of the person when appropriate. Learning methods, which are of great importance in terms of the affections and effective learning, enable individuals. Uh, to grasp a subject effectively by spending a short time. According to the research, research um, when uh, people reach information but visually and audibly, uh, they experience the e effective learning uh, uh, pro process fa fully. Uh, learning means the ability to create, applicate uh, responses to different events and to change, renew or shape all these responses when necessary in order for an event to be accepted as learning, a person must make a change in his behavior. What is meant by a change in behavior in that that uh, is that the uh, reaction to a situation, a change for the better or for, to, for the worse, the person should show a reaction other than the one he knows and always shows against the lived situation or information and reinforce this. Another important aspect for learning is that the change made on uh, one's behavior is long lasting. 
learning time of people with increased uh, learning uh, capacity is shortened. They experience a faster and more effective learning process. The points we mentioned above are mostly a, a part of face-to-face -face education. However, in some cases, education and uh, training methods and techniques may change due to the uh, COVID-19 epidemic, which started in uh, 2019 and in in present uh, us all uh, in our homes, some changes were made in technic methods. Since distance education was started web uh, to uh, to uh, zero learning tools in which students would uh, actively participate in the learning process on the screen came into our lives. It was actively used all of all the teachers of uh, our school learned these Web 2.0 tools part particularly during the vocational training activities during the pandemic period the students were made more active uh, active during the lesson with these methods i would like to introduce you to some of the methods we use below uh, one um Story jumper, uh, first story jumper. Uh, story jumper is the easiest way the way to create, uh, narrate, and publish your own hardcover and paperback books. Read and listen to books from a uh, story jumpers uh, worldwide community. Community, uh, create your classes. Check the books of people in your class. Uh, yes, uh, to uh, Google Classroom. Uh, Google Classroom is a virtual classroom application. It is an application that allows teachers to easily async uh, and organize homework, provide feedback effect effectively, and communicate easily with their students with Google Classroom. Teachers can create classes based on different courses and the topics of these courses by enabling a students to register, register for classes. It provides a comment area for sharing documents assignments, uh, evaluation uh, them by creating questions and answering questions in this post. A three mentimeters uh, create create uh, interactive uh, presence press, presence presence uh, and meetings wherever you are with Mentimeter get real time input from remote groups and online students with live service quizzes word plots uh, Q and A and more. Mentimeter's interactive presentation a platform is very easy to use and uh, has uh, features that allow you to prepare present and denial presentations. Uh, for Google Forms, with Google Forms, you can manage event uh, recensions, create a short survey, collect email, addresses for the newsletter, a create an uh, anonymous quiz, and much more. Uh, five Kahoot. With Kahoot, you can organize online quizzes and quizzes with your students using the PIN code you provide. Your students join Kahoot from their computer or mobile device and answer the questions you have prepared, the results are instantly reflect on everyone's screen. Six quizzes. 
A quizzes is a quiz tool used to create quizzes and get feedback in a fun way. It's a web platform created uh, to make the evaluation process that we use or need in daily life work or education fun and interesting. It allows participants to participate in assessments in groups with quizzes. You can either uh, take serious quizzes or create fun quizzes where people progress according to their own success. Uh, eight Padlet. A Padlet is like paper for uh, your screen. Start with a blank page and then put whatever you want. Upload videos, record interviews, uh, take selfies, write your own text posts or upload some documents and watch your Padlet come to life. After reading new items, the page is uh, updated in real time. Uh, nine, Duolingo. A Duolingo more than uh, one, um, one, two billion uh, people are learning languages and they are doing it to get better opportunities. Opportun uh, unfortunately, language learning is expensive and the majority are deprived of it. Duolingo is a tri truly a free language learning tool that makes learning a foraging language personalized and fun made for everyone to have the change to learn languages for free. Uh, the, infer the interface and the application, which is simple and uh, fun to use, support, supports uh, 23 languages. Languages you can learn with Duolingo, English, Spanish, Italian, German, uh, French, Portuguese, uh, China, Japanese, Russian, Polish, Arabic, Vietnam, Greek, Thai, Hungarian, Indonesian, Romanian, Dutch, Netherlands, in the Ukraine, Korean, and Jazz. Uh, ten Google Meet. Connect, uh, collaborate, and celebrate securely from anywhere in the world with Google Meet. Anyone using Google Meet can uh, securely create and join high quality video meetings up to. Uh, 215 users can attend these meetings. As a school, we have actively used uh, Web 2.0 uh, tools in order not uh, to disrupt the learning process of students in emergencies such as pandemics, and we have such success in uh, delivering the contact of each lesson to our students in full. Thanks for listening to me. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, dear colleagues. Uh, good evening and welcome to our webinar, Teaching in Emergency Situations. At the beginning and um, again, uh, my apologies for my camera. I know it would be nicer to see in face to face but uh, my uh, laptop isn't um, in good shape so uh, you can't uh, i can't um, open my camera uh, i want to thank to all of you who participate in this webinar uh, and especially to our presenters oana shukran bozica lubinka and to our colleague from the school of industry and craft the teacher of creation language and literature imana lukac bukovic uh, who is the, today this evening with us hello ivana okay uh um, I suggest that we maybe on the beginning, oh, Shukran's daughter, beautiful, <laughs> that we um, maybe say a few sentences about, um, like, general opinion about our webinar, and then we can continue with some questions if we have for each other. If you agree, is it okay? Yes? 
Okay. Uh, would someone yes. of you would like to start, maybe to give some general opinion about webinar? Uh, you probably saw presentations, so um, maybe you want to compare your experiences with others. Oana, would you like to start? Maybe as an English teacher and the icebreaker. <laughs> Um, I may start, first of all, uh, is it only on my screen that the image of my camera goes like this? Oh, we see it. Oh, two. Okay, I'll switch to my avatar. Mm -hmm. Stop. <laughs> Stop making all those moves. <laughs> it's not me. It's okay. it. Uh, so... Um, I would like to say that uh, this project was an, a very attractive one for me, even though I'm not a literature teacher, but I appreciate the way literature was approached. And I tried to uh, convey this message to other teachers, and I did so in a teacher's conference. <laughs> Uh, and they all agreed that it all comes down to the way we do it. Uh, and they congratulated our team for having uh, such an inspired approach. So uh, congratulations on the part of Romanian teachers. Okay, thank you. I see Onur here. Welcome, Onur, to our webinar. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Helena, you? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Are you in Manavgat or somewhere else in the world? Yes, for this night, Manavgat. Oh, Man Manavgat. Oh, great. Yes. Okay, well, we started our conversation after we uh, mm -hmm. done our presentations. Uh, and Oana said some general opinion before you connected to the webinar. Um, now, Lubinka Božica Shukran, would someone from you would like to continue? Okay, I, I can continue. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked very much every uh, of, pres of presentations. Uh, and uh, there is same tema, but different ways to uh, <laughs> different ways to to uh, see teaching uh, in uh, emergency situation. Uh, and every of presentation is uh, prepared to to. Uh, show the the way uh, of uh, experience of teaching uh, and be uh, successful in in subjects and uh, we tried to uh, show our experience or um, every uh, every partner's school experience and uh, I think that uh, there is very, very uh, good things can uh, uh, which uh, we can find out uh, like uh, advantages and disadvantages and uh, positive or negative uh, steps of of that online teaching, but uh, like a presentation of Romania. Um, of Joanna is um, we should we should uh, be prepared to to uh, show to our students how to uh, be careful with uh, online. Mm -hmm. That that is uh, I think so. That is very very uh, very. Well, how can I say uh, it is um, very 
maybe I can help you, Yubinka, if you want to say in Macedonian operation. It is very... Helena, how can you say that it is very... Ne pažljivo, nego, nego moramo paziti uh, obe strane, i, i, su, i učenici, i But, profesori, uh, 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 da, da ne bi, da ne bi uh, skrenuli u pogrešnu. Mm -hmm. both, stu way. Uh -huh. both so, students and teachers uh, need to be yeah. careful and... and, uh, and uh, be careful uh, to not do some, you know, uh, wrong, uh, to wrong behavior in that uh, online. Yes. Surrounding. Yes. Mm. Yes, and and every of of uh, school school partners uh, uh, have <laughs> used uh, all, almost the same uh, tools, and. Uh, they they can use in every everyday uh, learning uh, and in face to face and uh, in any any uh, time uh, to it's it's helpful to to uh, use in learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That that is my conclusion of of all of uh, these presentations that we uh, saw. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lubinka, very much. Uh, Shukran, would you like maybe to give some opinion about presentations? Uh, yes, uh, I I can prepare. Uh, I uh, prepared. Uh, uh, good evening to everyone from Turkey. Uh, we have implemented emer emergency uh, teaching methods throughout the pandemic. Uh, we use uh, Google Classroom while creating uh, class groups uh, and uh, uh, we insert coordination between the branches. Uh, this made it, uh, made it uh, easier for us to apply the uh, slide bus. We use Story Jumper, especially in the subjects of the writing uh, text in uh, uh, literature lessons. Uh, students were able to easily share uh, what they wrote with their teachers and friends. Uh, at the end of the unit, uh, we made our, our quizzes with Kahoot to uh, get feedback from students. Uh, we were uh, able to uh, identify missing topics and uh, repeat them immediately. Uh, of course, it wasn't as interactive as face-to-face -face training, but it couldn't be uh, better uh, in the pandemic. Uh, we completed distance education this way. Uh, I hope we don't go back to uh, those days. Uh, Thanks uh, for listening to me. Thank you, Shukran. Yes, I, I believe that we share the same opinion that we uh, we are hoping that this something similar would not uh, repeat during our lifetime, like pandemic, another pandemic or some even maybe worse thing like uh, war or similar. Uh, Božica? Well, I did my homework, so I have uh, lots of questions and lots of notes, but I'm going to be shorter. Uh, so I would like to say that I noticed that online teaching during the pandemic was a challenge for all of us, uh, as well as teachers and the students. Uh, but I think that in, it um, encouraged us and uh, accelerated the use of these digital tools uh, that we now use uh, more, uh, much more easily, I think. Uh, and uh, Oana said uh, in her uh, presentation that uh, virtual things became real. Uh, I was really um, impressed by that sentence because uh, I agree that students uh, uh, um, can, can learn uh, on their own pace, uh, uh, but sometimes we had uh, difficulties in that, 
uh, because they, for example, wouldn't uh, wake up on time in the morning because we uh, worked in real time uh, um, following their uh, school timetable. So when they had, um, I don't know, first and second uh, class uh, uh, Croatian, uh, we worked uh, like in the classroom. Uh, we followed that uh, time. Uh, and then they wouldn't show up on time or they overslept and uh, they went to eat something in the middle of the class. <laughs> so of course, and, uh, they played football outside and something like that. So um, it was um, really challenging for all of us. Um, we had to um, confront with all these situa situations and uh, we tried to uh, make the best of it. So I think uh, we all did uh, a very big job. I have a question for all of you or whoever would like to answer. Uh, we know we did our part as well as we could. Uh, how did the parents and the society react to online teaching, online school? For well, example, I uh, I heard a mother log into her daughter's account when they were at the manicure saloon. Yeah, uh, did their just to say <laughs> hi and not show their face yeah. and make sure Click they like. don't get an absence. Click like and then went on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we don't have in, in high school, in secondary school, our school, we didn't have lessons in real time. Uh, I had, unfortunately, uh, contacts uh, some, very often uh, with some parents because students, uh, their children, uh, haven't participated in activities they um, they just haven't uh, some from some students uh, there weren't any reactions so um, sometimes i had a situation when we had uh, to send some um, you know like a written uh, written reaction like a letter to parents you know just to uh, try to make the students behavior to, to change the direction to some positive uh, positive uh, direction and that that was the re reactions of some parents unfortunately the fact that they don't react and then they say nothing happened during the online school no teaching was done <laughs> Yes, and uh, we were asking uh, how they didn't react when a student doesn't work anything, you know, for, I don't know, maybe a week or two or three weeks, you know, their, their child was at home. And for me, it was a little bit... Um, a little bit... Frustrating. Yes, they, they don't ask that questions to their child, you know. But that's part of our job too, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, well, I would like to maybe to share some general opinion about this topic also. Um, I would like to say to you that um, uh, for me, um, extremely uh, following your experience was extremely uh, interesting for me in distance learning during the pandemic because um, I recognize myself in a lar large part of what you said because I think that our experience was uh, shared um, when wherever we lived in in different countries and that we from that initial confusion that I believe that we had in all countries uh, I believe that we had a lack of resources similar in Croatia unlike in other countries uh, that we um, our teaching uh, with time become more and more meaningful and uh, maybe a more 
with more quality. Um, also, I learned some digital tools um, that I have never used. Um, I introduced uh, them through your presentation, and I hope and I will believe that there will be opportunities uh, to include that um, digital tools in my teaching, maybe in the future. Um, and when we talk ge in general about distance learning, um, I think that some kind of hybrid model for some students, it's, it's, that it's a good idea um, when we talk about some students and some cons contents uh, outside of some um, emergency situations, you know, when we don't have pandemic, when we don't have war, some sometimes hybrid model for, I think so, uh, according to my opinion, I think it could be a good idea um, because um, students could uh, do a part uh, uh, part of uh, some uh, tasks uh, um, like on online, maybe at home, and uh, we can connect that with um, with teaching in, in, in classroom. Um, so maybe um, it would be good that some good parts of distance learning we keep in normal situations. So maybe it would be a good idea. Uh, so, um, I would like to ask you, because I had such experience, uh, do you have sometimes, had sometimes uh, situations that some students um, have, uh, have a better reactions during distance learning than in classroom before pandemic? That some students who maybe uh, didn't get some good grades and similar uh, during pandemic and during distance learning, uh, their behavior and their activities uh, were better. Do you have such examples or such experience? That would be my question. Helena, uh, I want to share with you um with all of you, uh, exper experience with with uh, student with uh, difficulties. Uh, it, uh, his uh, his name is Angelina, and uh, in in the online teaching, uh, she have uh, help from her mother. Uh, um, she is out autist and uh, she was more uh, uh, prepared to to uh, every uh, time you know, every lesson because uh, she was working with her and uh, but in the classroom uh, she, it, it it's very difficult to uh, have her uh, attention uh, because uh, sometimes there is uh, moments when she uh, don't want to work, she don't want to uh, write something uh, and she don't want to learn anything. Uh, sometimes it's okay, but sometimes it's uh, when she was uh, on face-to-face -face, uh, classroom. But uh, for the uh, time of, of distance learning, uh, she was more uh, careful to work and she was better with uh, her grades. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would say that some of my students, I had such experience and I would say, I'm not a psychologist, of course, uh, they are uh, introverts, you know, and when they are in classroom with 20 or 25 other personalities, they are quiet and uh, I they they, they uh, participate in conversation all only on my initiative. But yes. that, that circumstances when we, they were at their homes, in their rooms, you know, in some without 20 other people around them, uh, I get a great reaction and I was I was surprised with that reactions from that students because 
I, I, I almost never hear them in uh, classroom um, if, or I hear them only when I ask them something. Yes. Uh, Helena, mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I can answer uh, these uh, questions. Uh, I can start. Uh, can I start uh, my answer? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, all, also, our students uh, had less discipline uh, problems before the pandemic when face-to-face -face education started uh, after the uh, pandemic. Uh, they couldn't adapt uh, to uh, school. Uh, end classes uh, for a while. Uh, sometimes uh, they didn't want to uh, come to school. They didn't uh, want to do homework. Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, uh, problems. Uh, uh, my students' uh, problems. Uh, uh, they uh, they don't uh, come to uh, school. Thanks. Okay, and Bozica wanted to say something. Yeah, I just wanted to say that maybe it's more natural to them uh, to communicate online because they spend a lot of time on the online environment. It's more natural to them. They don't uh, have the fear of being uh, laughed at or uh, commented by their um, friends or mm -hmm. the situations they have in school. I have. Um, I think they're they are more relaxed on the online environment. Yes, I agree. Yes. Okay, uh, guys. Uh, do you have some more questions? We have five five minutes till the end of this Zoom meeting. Or no, uh, I'm sure that you have some genius question. No questions. Uh, no but, questions. Uh, you know, hey, but you know, I, I am I T teacher. So uh, the when start the pandemic, uh, we create our own platform uh, nearly in a one week, and uh, you told uh, a lot of teachers and students learn a lot of digital tools to to, to use the, their teaching, and. Uh, we don't need to choose face to face or uh, distance learning. So we have to use together uh, the pandemic situation. Teach us uh, these important things. We have to. Uh, uh, the pandemic was finished, but uh, we have to use also digital tools like a distance learning. We don't forget this. Do you still use digital tools in face-to-face -to -face learning, um, teaching? Sorry. Yes, yes. We uh, always we have to use the hybrid education. In the in the school in the school we have to use face-to-face, -face, but we uh, after the school we have to continue with uh, distance learning. For example, you can you can send uh, some homeworks, some uh, exams. Uh, the Ljubljana told some students uh, can be relaxed uh, distance to uh, distance learning. So, um, for example, uh, during the education year, you can do two exams in online, not only face to face. Yes, I hope that some good things from this distance learning will stay with us in this normal period. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, dear all, thank you for your participation. Tomorrow, or maybe tonight, I'm not sure, I'll send you a link uh, for the evaluation of this webinar. Uh, so it just a bit few questions. So please, maybe just two, two minutes of your time you'll need for this evaluation form. And thank you for your cooperations, uh, cooperation. And I hope that we'll see each other in some other activities very soon and you'll see all Lubinka and Ivana in Macedonia in April. So Onur, do you already know who is going to Macedonia from your school? 
uh, not me. Uh, you know, uh, I couldn't send the, uh, my group to Croatia, so I will add uh, Croatian and Macedonian group. Mm -hmm. So I will I will send double teachers and students to Macedonia. But uh, I can't come. I have to be in Turkey that time. But I will send four teachers. Shukran uh, cannot come. Uh, I want to send her, but uh, she, she is a baby. Uh, so uh, I will send literature teacher, English teacher, and uh, the project coordinator. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, uh, have a nice evening and see you soon. Bye. You too. Okay. Bye. 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 You I, wa I want. Thank you for I hosting us. To... <laughs> yes, Anna. I want to to say that we are waiting. Uh, all of you <laughs> in Macedonia, third or or second April, and mm -hmm. we will see. <laughs> Yes, Ivana will come to Macedonia. Ivana, Jasna, okay. and our uh, principal, probably, yes. Okay. And I will go to Romania with our English teacher, Matea. Yay! <laughs> okay, great. Okay. See you, bye. Okay. Bye. bye, -bye. See you.